So far, 10 seasons of Fortnite have passed, and we've been through quite a few awesome moments. From the rocket launch to Kevin the Cube, Caddis vs. Doggis, the Black Hole, boy, we've been through a lot. We've had great seasons, and then we've had particular seasons where Epic decided to add a giant metal robot with 1,000 health and unlimited rockets. I'm your host, Dan, and in this video, we're going to be ranking every Fortnite season to determine the best and worst seasons. Each season will be ranked based on four conditions, including gameplay, which will include the meta, weapons, and balance of the season, which will count for three out of 10 points, cosmetics, which will account for two points, which includes the battle pass and quality of the skins release, map, which will account for two more points, and finally, competitive, which will count for three more points. But before we start this video, we'd like to announce our Black Friday sale. Today, all subscriptions to our website will be 33% off. This offer expires tonight at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players, guys like Benji and Mongrel, and more World Cup champions coming soon. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Season 1 First, we have good old Season 1. Season 1 is one of the most loved seasons by most of the community because it was essentially where everything started. Epic Games wasn't a giant in the gaming industry, and the game was nothing like it is today. Good old classic Fortnite. First, for Season 1, we got the gameplay. There were tons of bugs in Season 1, and the game wasn't polished like it is today. The whole Battle Royale mode was new and generally unexplored. For Season 1, the gameplay ranking is a 1.5. Although it was awesome, it was nowhere near a great state, and it had a lot of bugs and issues. The cosmetics in Season 1 were alright, but nothing compared to the items that came out in the following seasons. A few of the most beloved skins from Season 1 include the Renegade Raider, Recon Expert, Survival Specialist, and the Brawler. For cosmetics, Season 1 gets a 1 out of 2. The Season 1 map was easily the most boring map we've had yet. While it is the OG map, it's hard to mask the fact that there just wasn't much going on. There were only 12 POIs, most of which were small and weren't too interesting. However, the simplicity of the map is one of the greatest things about it, as there was just enough to explore and find without it being a confusing mess. Season 1 gets a 1.5 out of 2 for its map. Finally, the Season 1 competitive scene. The competitive scene didn't exist, but the game was in a solid state, and if there were enough players at the time, we're sure Season 1 competitive could have been a thing. Although there was no official competitive scene at the time, a 1.5 out of 3 is fair. Overall, while Season 1 was the classic OG season and set up everything Fortnite is today, it was definitely the lowest in terms of actual quality and didn't really have much interesting going on. Season 1 gets a 5.5 out of 10 on our scale. Season 2 Season 2 is famous for the first ever Battle Pass, which included beloved skins like the Black Knight and Sparkle Specialist. Season 2 was also the season where most of Fortnite's core was really developed. From mini shields to launch pads, boogie bombs, LTMs, the chug jug, impulse grenades, minigun, cozy campfire, crossbow, the removal of friendly fire, and more. Anyway, let's continue with the actual rankings. For gameplay, Season 2 deserves 2 out of 3 points. It wasn't near perfect, but the loot pool was decent, and new items were being added to spice up gameplay. For cosmetics, it's gotta be a 1.5 out of 2. Sure, the items in the first ever Battle Pass were great, and the item shop skins were cool too, but we just didn't have the same quality of skins that we do today, with fancy effects and all. The Season 2 map was quite literally the same as Season 1, scoring it a 1 out of 2. And finally, competitive was starting to form in Season 2, with the first ever invitationals and new insane players popping up left and right. However, it was nowhere near fully developed, and there weren't any big tournaments at the time, so competitive in Season 2 gets a 1.5 out of 3, making the overall score for Season 2 6 out of 10, not too bad. Season 3 is where Fortnite has developed itself as a game, and everything from here on out is basically just adding on to this foundation. Quality of life improvements like building through natural structures, auto switch materials, turbo building, colorblind settings, anti-cheat protection, and more dominated Season 3's patch notes. The most notable changes in Season 3 were to the map, however, where six new POIs were added, including Snobby Shores, Haunted Hills, Junk Junction, and beloved Tilted Towers, Lucky Landing, and Shifty Shafts. Alongside these were other unnamed locations like the Factory, Soccer Stadium, Motel, the Broken Down Neighborhood, and others. Finally, numerous weapons and items were added, including the hand cannon, hunting rifle, guided missile, remote explosives, port -a fort LMG, and the Klinger. On top of all this, vending machines and replay mode were added, which added much more potential to the game. 
So with all of that out of the way, let's get to the ratings. In season three, gameplay was a 2.5 out of three. Sure, there were some issues and bugs, but the season felt much better than previous ones and had new items and changes to keep the game fresh. On top of this, the meteor in the sky had the whole community excited and looking forward to season four and added mystery and suspense. Cosmetics were nice too, with skins like the OG John Wick, Dark Voyager, spacesuit skins, and a ton of awesome new skins in the item shop. It couldn't be anything less than a 1.5 out of 2. Season 3's map was a giant improvement from the previous map. Just take a look for yourself. This was one of the most balanced maps in terms of loot, density, and quality of the locations, scoring Season 3 the first perfect score for anything on this list, 2 out of 2 for the map. Finally, Season 3, Competitive. Season 3 was the season where competitive started to take off, and the growth of countdown scrims and other forms of competitive play was crazy, especially leading into the next few seasons. However, there still weren't any major tournaments, so Season 3 Competitive gets a 1.5 out of 3, making the overall score for Season 3 7.5 out of 10 pretty good. Season 4 was many people's favorite season yet. The most memorable parts of Season 4 were jetpacks, Thanos mode, epic and legendary burst ARs, dual pistols, stink bombs, drum guns, thermal ARs, bounce pads, and the giant shotgun nerf. Finally, who can forget Dusty Divot and Fortnite's first vehicle, shopping carts? Gameplay in Season 4 was not bad at all. There were bugs here and there, but it felt very polished and clean overall, scoring Season 4 a 2.5 out of 3 for gameplay. The only reason this isn't a 3 is because low skill items were beginning to be introduced like the drum gun and jetpacks, which rewarded low skill. The Season 4 cosmetics were some of the cleanest and most memorable, including the Omega, Carbide, and Technique. Alongside this, the quality of item shop skins was as high as ever. Cosmetics in Season 4 were 2 out of 2. The Season 4 map was great, but there wasn't much change from Season 3 other than the Meteor. Unfortunately, we're going to have to lower the map score due to this to 1.5 out of 2. Finally, Competitive was starting to take off in Season 4, with the Solo Showdown LTM and the huge announcement that Epic would invest $100 million into Competitive in its upcoming year. All of this scores Competitive a 2 out of 3 in Season 4, making Season 4's overall score an 8 out of 10. Pretty gosh darn good! Next up on the list, we got Season 5. Season 5 is infamous for the All-Terrain Cart, which was the second vehicle added to Fortnite. Alongside this, the map received a huge update, removing Moisty Mire and replacing it with a desert biome featuring the Desert Racetrack, Westworld, and Paradise Palms. This season also featured a ton of new items, including the Heavy Sniper, Shockwave, Rift to Go, Double Barrel, Grappler, SMG, Porta Fortress, and more. However, this meta was often described as the spam meta, as drum guns and compact SMGs cluttered the loot pool and had little to no skill gap. That's the biggest reason why some people didn't like Season 5. Season 5 gets a 1.5 out of 3 for gameplay. The loot pool was cluttered and the spam meta just wasn't any fun. However, the game still had that spark, and while some of the new items may have been somewhat annoying, it was still great overall, especially with the new mobility around the map. In terms of cosmetics, Season 5 was one of the best seasons yet. The most notorious skins of this season were Drift and Ragnarok, which were two of the earliest upgradable skins apart from Carbide and Omega. On top of this, item shop skins were getting cooler and cooler with new effects and great concepts, so Season 5 receives a 2 out of 2 for its awesome cosmetics. The Season 5 map was refreshing and exciting. The new biome brought a lot more diversity to the map, the headstones with rifts were a great addition for mobility and materials, and Lazy Lynx was added which brought toys into the mix, with the ability to golf. Finally, the Viking Village was a great spot and filled up a very quiet part of the map. The map for Season 5 gets a perfect 2 out of 2. Finally, competitive in Season 5 was blowing up like crazy. This was the season where scrims became giant, with almost every competitive player participating. The first summer skirmish, which was a giant hit, and the fall skirmish was also announced in the final week. However, the loot pool was very cluttered and wasn't very competitive friendly, especially with spammy weapons being the meta. Due to this, we're going to have to put Season 5 competitive at 2 out of 3, making Season 5's overall score 7.5 out of 10, just a bit behind Season 4. Let's see how Season 6 can stack up. Season 6 was one of the least popular seasons yet due to the Fort Nightmares event, which had the whole community angry and confused. This event basically consisted of the whole map becoming foggy and filled with annoying zombies. I can't tell you how many times I raged at those things. This was also the season of Kevin the Cube and the Floating Island, which most people seem to enjoy. However, this was another spam meta season, with the quad launcher, mounted turret, and dynamite being added, along with a few other weapons which weren't all that bad. 
The quad crasher was great, the heavy AR rewarded good aim, and the epic and legendary pumps rewarded headshots like no other weapon before. The gameplay rating for Season 6 is going to have to be on the lower side. It was just too spammy and low skill. Pros were angry throughout the entire season, and the zombies did not help. Due to the zombies and low skill meta, Season 6 scores a 1.5 out of 3 for gameplay. Cosmetics in Season 6 weren't bad, but they weren't the best either. The most popular skins of this season were Dire and Calamity, which to be fair were great skins, but we feel like Epic could have done a bit better with the rest of them. 1.5 out of 2 for Cosmetics. The Season 6 map is one of its biggest downfalls. The only major changes that occurred were the Corrupted Zones and the Loot Lake Island, but these only impacted a tiny portion of the map. It would have been nice to see more variety in the Season 6 changes, but it was still a good map overall. This map scores a 1.5 out of 2. Finally, we have Competitive. Competitive was a bit dry in Season 6, with the only major event announcement being TwitchCon, which was great and all, but that was about it. Scrims were still popular, Competitive was doing great as a whole, but there wasn't much going on. Plus, the Zombies and Explosive Meta were horrible for Competitive, scoring Season 6 a 1 out of 3, making the overall score 5.5, the lowest score since Season 1. Infinity Blades, Planes, Boom Boxes, and Bottle Rockets. That just about sums up Season 7. Season 7 basically consisted of a bunch of overpowered items that ruined gameplay and cluttered up the loot pool. However, Creative was added, which did bring a whole new side to Fortnite, which somewhat made up for the lackluster gameplay in Battle Royale. However, it's gonna have to be a 1.5 out of 3 for gameplay. Cosmetics in Season 7 were awesome, with the Lynx, Zenith, and Ice King being the three most popular items. Epic does deserve some credit for the cosmetics this season, and we think 2 out of 2 is fair. The Season 7 map was a huge, unexpected change, covering a fourth of the map in snow and adding tons of new locations and POIs. Three new named locations were added at the expense of two, Flush Factory and Greasy Grove. However, there was a lot of empty space in this section of the map, making the overall map score for Season 7 a solid 1.5 out of 2. Finally, Competitive was soaring in Season 7, with Mongrel, Mr. Savage, and other pros popping up left and right. Season 7 also included the announcement for the $100 million World Cup, which ended in Season 9, along with Share the Love, the first major in-game tournament. While the loot pool wasn't great, Competitive was at a giant peak, scoring Season 7 a 2 out of 3. This makes Season 7 score 7 out of 10. Season 8 was one of the best seasons for Fortnite. Everything was looking up for the game. Reboot vans, siphon and pubs, treasure maps, arena mode, cannons, the flintlock pistol, World Cup qualifiers, it was all great. Gameplay was at an all-time high with all these new changes, apart from the boom bow, which nobody seemed to like. Season 8 gameplay gets a 2.5 out of 3. Cosmetics were the one downfall of Season 8, as the Lux skin wasn't exactly the coolest Tier 100 skin. The Battle Pass also could have been done a bit better, but was partially made up for with some nice item shop skins. Season 8 scores a 1 out of 2 for Cosmetics. The Season 8 map introduced geysers, the new volcano, sunny steps, and lazy lagoon. All these changes were great and added even more variety to the map. This map may have been the best one yet, scoring Season 8 a perfect 2 out of 2 for its map. Finally, competitive in Season 8 was a solid 2.5 out of 3. The World Cup qualifiers were going on and arena mode was added, but it just wasn't complete. No major tournaments happened during Season 8 apart from Cash Cups, as everything was leading into the World Cup. Season 8 gets an 8 out of 10, tied with Season 4 as the best so far. Let's see if Season 9 can stack up. Season 9 was the World Cup season where Booga took home the trophy and made a name for himself. There were a few poorly thought out additions like the Burst SMG, Drum Shotgun, Proximity Launcher, and Airstrike, but most of these were vaulted relatively quickly. Also, the Pump Shotgun was vaulted, which caused a giant shock throughout the community. The gameplay in Season 9 was a 1.5 out of 3. The spammy and poorly thought out weapons, the annoying items, the Pump Shotgun vault, it just didn't feel right. Season 9 had the least memorable Battle Pass skins to date. I can't even recall even one of them, can you? 1 out of 2 for cosmetics, they could have done a lot better. The Season 9 map featured great mobility. Mega Mall and Neo Tilted were both refreshing and new, scoring Season 9's map a perfect 2 out of 2. Finally, competitive in Season 9 was the best yet, with the $100 million World Cup. That event was absolutely nuts. There's no doubting that Season 9 competitive was a perfect 3 out of 3, putting Season 9 at 7.5 out of 10. Season 10 was arguably the worst season yet, featuring annoying rift zones, automatic snipers, zapper traps, giant robots with unlimited rockets, and turbo building nerfs. Gameplay was at an all-time low. Season 10 gets the worst gameplay score of all, 0.5 out of 3. 
To be fair, cosmetics weren't bad in Season 10, but the Battle Pass was a bit underwhelming. Similar to Season 9, I just can't remember most of the skins from the Battle Pass. However, new item shop skins were popping up almost daily, which partially made up for the lackluster Battle Pass. One out of two for cosmetics. The Season 10 map featured the return of Dusty Depot, which went through a lot of change throughout the season. But other than that, the map changes only consisted of rift zones. Nobody wanted to dance with tacos in their hands, be unable to build, be surrounded by zombies, play prop hunt, or any of that stuff. The Season 10 map gets a 1 out of 2. Finally, the Season 10 competitive scene was good, but not great. The mechs ruined Arena, and Trio's FNCS was annoying with them too. While Trio's FNCS was good, it was nowhere near as popular as the World Cup and didn't have as much hype. Competitive gets a 1 out of 3 due to the lack of excitement and mechs ruining Arena, making the overall score for Season 10, drum roll please, 3.5 out of 10, making it officially the worst season of Fortnite yet. Chapter 2 Season 1 is the current season at the time of this video. The main points this season included a brand new map, simplified loot pool, skill-based matchmaking, and the addition of bots to public matches. This season definitely has good, clean gameplay. However, the loot pool is a bit heavy in RPGs and snipers, and many features the community wants, such as an FOV slider and siphon in pubs, still haven't been added yet. However, as a whole, the season's gameplay is pretty nice. We think 2 out of 3 is fair. The Chapter 2 Season 1 cosmetics are pretty cool, with the Battle Pass having brand new fan favorites, including the Ripley skin, the 8-ball skin, and the awesome-looking Tier 100 Fusion skin. We couldn't give Chapter 2 Season 1 anything lower than 1.5. The only reason this isn't higher is because we haven't seen quite as much in the item shop lately. Hopefully this changes and this season moves up on the list. The brand new map scores Chapter 1 Season 2 the easiest 2 out of 2 on this entire list. I mean, come on, it's a whole new map, who doesn't like that? Finally, Chapter 2 Season 1 Competitive is great, with squads as the primary game mode, multiple solo cash cups every week, and fun events like Friday Night Fortnite and Hype Night. However, duos and trios are left in the dust, and we feel like Competitive would be much better with a bit more diversity. Also, Arena feels a lot more grindy and isn't really enjoyable for most players. This season gets a solid 2 out of 3 for Competitive. So overall, Season 1 of Chapter 2 gets 7.5 out of 10 possible points from what we've had so far. However, we're only halfway through this season, so a lot could change. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let us know in the comments what you've thought of the season so far and your rating for it. Due to the mechs, poor cosmetics, low hype around competitive, annoying rift zones, and an overall underwhelming season, Season 10 is the official worst season yet. Season 4 and 8 are both tied at 8 points each as the best seasons yet. Let us know in the comments if you agree with our selections and if you change or adjust any of these. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES in the Fortnite item shop when you make any sort of purchases as it really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next on the channel. We aim to bring you guys the best daily Fortnite content, so do us a favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Once again, it's your host, Dan. You can find me at, at Daniel Ammerman, and we'll see you all in the next one.